For years, my extended family had suffered through what was known as the Connie Curse. Named after my beloved grandmother, Consuelo, the Connie Curse lasted for 35 years. What is the Connie Curse, you may ask? Well, my grandmother had always wished for a daughter. However, fate stepped in and delivered her five healthy boys. As family lore tells it, my father and his brothers kept my grandmother on her toes. Her prayers for a girl were finally answered in the form of granddaughters, 12 of them to be exact, and then in great-granddaughters, which we're still counting. So all of her boys had little girls. In fact, there wasn't a boy born in our family from 1973 until 2008. Wow. So in all, 15 babies in a row were girls. But then I delivered my second beautiful baby, and I couldn't believe it, a boy. I considered myself the hero who had finally broken the Connie curse. <laughs> So I quickly made all of the obligatory family phone calls, happily reporting that the curse had been broken at long last. But my giddiness was short-lived. Nothing could have prepared me for being a mom to a boy. <laughs> I used to think that my sweet natured daughter was a handful. I had no idea. <laughs> I had been a kindergarten teacher for 10 years. I figured that I had seen it all. I thought that I could handle anything. Boy, was I wrong. <laughs> Pun intended. My son is a rolling, jumping, kicking, hitting ball of energy. At times, I feel like a tornado has swept past me, and it's amazing how Anything and everything in our house can be magically transformed into a sword, a lightsaber, a gun, or even worse. One Christmas, I was wrapping presents on the living room floor, and I absentmindedly left an empty cardboard wrapping paper tube on the rug beside me as I tried diligently to finish all of the packages. My son bounded into the room, and immediately zeroed in on that discarded tube. I saw his big blue eyes get wide and bright, and I knew I was in for it. I could see the wheels turning in his mind as he jumped across the room and lunged for the tube. Oh no, what would he turn it into? A spotting scope? No, I should not be so lucky. Maybe it would be a magic wand? Of course not. No, he quickly grabbed that tube, stuck it right between his legs, <laughs> and proclaimed to the family, look, I have a humongous penis. <laughs> no, it gets better. <laughs> So then he proceeded to knock over Christmas decorations <laughs> with his new appendage. He even whapped his sister in the face. <laughs> All the while yelling, look at my huge penis. <laughs> and where did that come from? It's not like we talk about penises around the dinner table. But I do remember that one day, during our potty training years, he had announced to me that he had a very strong penis <laughs> because he could hold his potty for so long. But why would you want to hold your potty, I asked. He informed me he was the champion of holding his potty. <laughs> really? Yeah, I can hold it for like two years. <laughs> Great. So that is why I'm so frequently woken up in the middle of the night with the words, Mommy, I had an accident. 
and it happened just last night, too. <laughs> My daughter never wet the bed, so it seemed like I was actually on the losing side of this Connie curse because I no longer felt like the hero that had broken the curse and reintroduced boys to the family. I was just the over-fatigued, overwhelmed mother of a boy. When I was 35, I was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer. I was the most worried about my son. How would I ever explain this to my four-year-old boy? What if I could no longer be the fun-loving mom that he was used to? Everything would change now. Chemotherapy, radiation, surgery, all became words that he would hear frequently. After my double mastectomy, I was confined to the couch and the bed, barely able to move, and loaded down with painful tubes that drained the blood that my body could not absorb. I didn't play anymore. I couldn't wrestle. I could barely smile. My son would cry and tell me that he just wanted his old mom back. I wanted her back too. But finally, one day, on the road to recovery, my son devised a plan to fix our situation. I saw him round the corner in the living room and head toward me with two screwdrivers <laughs> in his hands. Now, one screwdriver was from his toy workbench, but the other one was real and it was pretty big. What are those for? I asked him warily. I'm going to take your drains out, he insisted. <laughs> Referring to the tubes attached to my chest. Mm, the doctor will do that, I explained, and I watched him as he continued to come at me with those tools. <laughs> no, this will be easier, he said. <laughs> Just lift up your shirt. I'll take care of it. Oh, if it were only that easy. But eventually, I did get better, and the drains were removed, and I regained my strength. And after about two years, I became the old mommy again. My son doesn't even remember my cancer, but I will never forget those years or how my crazy son tried to take care of me. So things are back to normal, and Mother's Day finally rolled around, the one day that the kids know to go easy on me. So after much coaching from my wonderful husband, the kids understood that I was supposed to be allowed to sleep in and relax on my special day. Oh, by the way, sleeping in at my house means 7 a.m. That's it. <laughs> That's it. So the day was carefully planned to ensure maximum mommy relaxation, and I couldn't wait. But sure enough, at exactly 5.15 a.m., my son rushed into our bedroom screaming, wake up, it's Mother's Day. <laughs> You have to sleep in. <laughs> Damn that Connie curse. 